Initiation by Elizabeth H. Chapter 46, Conclusion After the experience of that night, I knew the tensions and stresses had been erased from my soul. Everything personal would have to be discarded. I had overcome myself. There was nothing more within me to bind me to my person. Everything personal had to disappear. It began with a very strange feeling which followed me wherever I went, at home or outdoors, that I wasn't really there. Not there, but where? I really didn't know. But suddenly I became aware of the fact that I myself was never where my person, my body, was located. On the contrary, myself projected itself out of the spacelessness into my person, and now myself was beginning to project itself somewhere else than where my physical being was. But where? Into another country? I knew I was going to go away, that I was going to have to go away. Whenever the spirit, the cause, ceases to be present, the appearance, the effect, must follow it wherever it's projected by the cause. There it can go on living. Otherwise, the appearance would disappear, that is, die. But how am I supposed to leave this country? No one can get a passport. The time, of my be the time for my departure had not yet come. Other events had to take place first. One night, I awakened quite suddenly. I saw my father standing before me, taking leave of me with a smile on his dear sweet face. I understood. It was time for him to go. I wanted to jump up and ask him why he wanted to go away and where he was going. But he disappeared, and I realized I was just awakening. Father was 80 years old, but hale and hearty in body and mind. With ever fresh and undiminished energy, he was still going on with his very responsible government job. Nevertheless, I knew his spirit had come to me to take leave. His time had run out on the great cosmic clock and he was going to leave his body behind. The next day, he was already in the hospital and all the rest of us gathered round to say goodbye. He either could not or would not speak. With long, deep, tender glances, he looked at each of us in the eye in turn. And then he closed his eyes and he didn't open them anymore. And we accompanied the second coffin out of the family. My son tried everything he could to get work. In vain, he kept on trying again and again, but always in vain. Finally, he came to the realization that there was no room for him anymore in our country. And the day came when he took his guitar, a dear old traveling companion he had never neglected, even in the grimmest days of the war, and went away in search of a country where a free man who wanted to work could find a home. Again, we took leave of each other, not knowing whether we would ever meet again in this life, but in the depths of myself. I knew I would see him again. I knew we would still be working together in God's garden. Then came the last act. Bogar had just given a public lecture. As usual, the audience was so big, the police had to keep order. After the lecture, he found himself surrounded by people, plying him with questions, begging for autographs, and refusing to let him go home. While all this was going on, my husband and I were standing a bit apart from the crowd, waiting. Suddenly, an officer of the secret police appeared and asked to speak with me. When we had stepped to one side, he said, I practice yoga and my whole family with me. So I know it's a wonderful system. Nevertheless, both you and the Indian are dangerous because so many people listen to you and do as you say. The party doesn't like that. So now you're going to have to decide either to work with the party 
and for it or get out of the country. We'll let you both go without hindrance, but if you refuse to go, you'll be forced to take other we'll be forced to take other measures. Think over this proposition. My superiors have asked me to bring you and act accordingly. I'll come back to hear your decision. Bogar could have left the country freely with his passport, but I was obliged to seek permission and apply for a special permit to another country. Soon I was involved in an endless chase for an exit permit and for entry permits. Finally, I was forced to realize that it was absolute impossibility for me to get a passport. I was shunted back and forth from one office to another until at long last I received a final and definite refusal. But that meant the secret police would soon be having recourse to other methods. But, and we all knew what that meant, many of our friends had already disappeared for good, and all while others, after suffering horrible tortures in prison, had been released broken in mind and body only to die a miserable death shortly thereafter. Then, Bogar said to my husband, the only possibility of saving your wife is for you to divorce her and let me take her out of the country as my wife. In this way, she'll have the same passport as mine and we can leave the country legally and you'll come later. My husband seized Bogar's hand but was unable to say a word. Big tears of gratitude welled up in his tortured eyes. So the day came when I took leave of all the people near and dear to me, and I set out into the unknown world to make my home wherever God should lead us. Bogar kept his word. He came from the other end of the world to save me. We found Ima again, and together we are traveling on in the footsteps of the Titans, who have shown us the pathway to initiation, to redemption, to the lost paradise. And when I seek those whom I love, I turn the searchlight of my consciousness inward, for everything and everyone is living within me. The self, at one and the same time, the self of all living creatures, and therefore myself, knows no bounds. So the entire universe is within me, and myself fills all the universe, everything that is, I am. In everything I love, I love myself. For the only things we think we don't love are what we haven't yet come to recognize within ourselves. The self is life and only reality. And whoever is initiated into the self and in this way has come to know himself completely loves everything and everyone equally, for he is one with them.